I never know why it doesn't start at the front. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. I'm going to give you a very, my name is Karen McPherson. I'm going to give you a very quick introduction to genetic algorithms. Um, obviously, it's a large topic. I can't cover everything in 10 minutes, but this should be um, a good introduction to this as well as an intro to, um, you know how to do full screen on this? Thank you. As well as an introduction to machine learning and artificial intelligence as well. So, first, what is a genetic algorithm? Um, it's mainly a search heuristic, heuristic that mimics the process of natural selection. So a heuristic is a, an algorithm that doesn't necessarily guarantee you the best solution or the perfect solution, but a good enough solution. So these can be really um, useful when you don't exactly know what the best solution is. In a way, you can think of the way natural selection works in nature. It's not moving towards a specific goal. It's adapting slowly to its current environment. So first, we need to understand how natural selection works, which is what genetic algorithms mimic. So if you remember from your ninth grade biology class, you have a population of individuals, and their genetic code has variation in it. So you have different color hair, you have different color eyes, heights. All these have variation. And some of these individuals die. <laughs> and some of them uh, get to live on, and those who survive reproduce, or at least the lucky ones get to. The, and then you also have mutations that will introduce um, more variation, which is very important, which we'll see later. And at least for uh, evolution, this repeats for millions and millions of years and is still going. When we translate this into computer science, what we get is a randomly generated population of solutions instead of genomes. So what these are are all of the possible solutions space. Or not po all the po possible solutions, but a randomly generated set of a certain size. We want to rank those solutions in their order of fitness. So have the mo we need to figure out which ones are the most fit and which ones are the least fit, which ones are the closest to our optimal solution. And we want to select those top solutions and just discard the rest. Those top solutions get to have some fun. They get to then mutate. <laughs> and then you want to repeat those steps until you reach your end condition. And this end condition is going to be completely different for any possible or any given problem. Um, it could be a certain generation number, which isn't usually very effective because you could, if you reach the generation, a certain generation before you get anywhere near an optimal solution, you're out of luck. Um, or we could stop when we reach a predetermined goal, but as I said, we don't always know what that goal is. So usually we want to stop when our best solution hasn't changed in a certain number of generations. So I'm, when would we like to use this? Um, a lot of times it's, so this is a, an XKCD comic of the traveling salesman problem. And what it is is you have a certain number of cities and you have distances between them. You want to find the shortest distance between all the cities while going to each one at least once. This is um, called an MP-complete problem and because the entire search space is just extremely large. It's very, very hard to brute force this. Um, and so you can use genetic algorithms to drastically decrease the amount of time that it would take to do a problem like this, but you also might not, not find the perfect solution. So in keeping with CS tradition, we're going to start with the hello world. So what we get is if you start with random uh, assortment of solutions, you may start with a, um, an individual that has a genome of that GECMO at the top. Over time, we might see this best solution start be mutating and combining until eventually we reach hello world. Obviously, it's a very contrived solution. There are better ways to find hello world, like console logging it out. But <laughs> this is a really good, this is a, a short enough problem that you can actually see the different steps, which I'll go through very quickly. This is um, some code I wrote just to, um, from, to show you how this would work. So I have the solution class, which would be one individual. It has a code, which would be its string of whatever it happens to be. And it has a cost, which is how far away it is from hello world. 
Then you have a population, population which you have an array of all your solutions, possible solutions, um, a goal that you're trying to get to, which would be hello world in our case, and um, a generation number. And then we randomly will generate a population of a certain size. So then we have to determine the fitness. So we calculate the cost based for each solution based on how far it is away from hello world. We sort those solutions, uh, which will give us our best solutions at the top, the ones that are closest to hello world based on their character codes. And then we have the survival of fittest function at the bottom, which kills off um, an arbitrary number of the worst solutions. And then, oh, and I found this because I thought it perfectly illustrated my point. And so then you want to combine some of your best solutions, which would be the reproduction step in wild, because you want to get, you want to recombine your best solutions into more daughter solutions so that you can get more variation in your, in your population. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just finding the middle of the string and then I'm swapping them to create the daughter strings. And then we also want to introduce mutation, which I'll tell you why we can't just rely on reproduction. Um, but this is just taking a random index and then increasing or decreasing the character code at one of those indexes. So we need variation because, like I said, it doesn't always find the best solution. So you have different low, like maximum solutions, and if you're on that slope and they're all going towards one local maximum solution, then you'll get caught there. Very, um, mutation helps you maybe jump to another possible solution, and so you can get higher up and closer to that perfect solution that you're looking for. So now this is our generation, so that's one generation. We go through, we calculate the costs or fitness of each solution, then we sort them, then we say, okay, is the best one hello world? If so, you're done. Otherwise, kill off some, uh, create more by mating, and then go through some mutation steps. So I have, uh, I'll show you this in action. There we go. So I have it ready to run. There you go. So it took us 1,417 generations to get to Hello World. And you can see as I go up here how it's slowly changing. And I didn't do Hello World because it went too fast, so it's Hello Full Stack 1507. Okay, so that's a very contrived example, obviously. So, but another example would be the knapsack problem, which is where you have um, many different items, they have a weight, they have a value, and you want to get combine as many of these values as you can under a certain weight, but with the highest value. And again, XKCD says it much better. So if here are your appetizers, they want exactly $15.07 worth of appetizers. And so I didn't write this one, I just found this um, that's a really good uh, visualization. So it shows you the generation and then your best value, and then the weight has to stay under, in this example, a thousand pounds or an arbitrary number. And then this one, its stop case is that it doesn't change in here 200 generations. So for this algorithm, if you just take like the highest weighted things, like the highest ratio of items that have high cost to weight value, it's like a naive, greedy algorithm, it will only get to 4,900. And this one goes, will find a value of 5,900, so it's already beating the like, naive, greedy algorithm that you could have done. So some real life applications, because those are both not very useful, right? But you can use this in a lot of design where you don't exactly know what is going to be best. So automotive design, like what you can generate many different configurations and see, well, which ones do have the best aerodynamics by trial and error, essentially. Or my favorite example is the robotics, where it's really hard to code a robot how to walk teach it how to walk by hard coding. And even if you get that to work, then your next robot might have a completely different center of gravity. Just by a little bit, it'll throw all of your calculations off. So why not teach the robot how to learn how to walk itself? 
So if you want to learn more, because this is very brief, um, there's some great examples online, even in JavaScript. There are also some libraries. I wrote these from scratch so you could see what was going on. Um, but there are some pretty good JavaScript libraries, though it's not the language of choice for these algorithms. Okay, any questions? <laughs> I imagine they, I don't know for sure, but I imagine they were people that were interested in both. Similar, there are a lot of mathematical algorithms that can be applied to biology and vice versa, like game theory. Um, I really don't know the answer to your question, though. It's a, it'd be an interesting thing. It's not from the previous, it's from the goal, which in this case was Hello World. And in a way, I was using it as the inverse of fitness. So fitness would be something that would be high. I'm using cost as an inverse of that. And that would just depend on the problem that you're trying to solve. And then the mutations, are those random? Yeah, those are random. Uh, not so much. It's more that you're changing the population itself. You're not keeping separate paths. You have a large population of possible solutions, and you're just changing individual ones. Hope, and it's more like you're hoping it'll get up to that sub that path. But there's no check to see if you get it. Mm -mm. Because you don't know what that is. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.